Why don't you come on in? Hi guys, it's me, it's Michelle Marie Glenny, and we're doing something different today. How you can use an older camera to do videos like we do. Now, we know we use this fancy camera, but a lot of people kind of start out looking for um, how to make a video that looks good using older equipment. A lot of times people get surplus stuff. One of the things that I try to do is to show you on a, on a shoestring of how you can make videos and make them look good. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to talk about some of the low cost ways that you can get started on YouTube videos. And it will, it does kind of tie in, it's a nice little bookend for what we're talking about, welcome to my world, about cameras for um, um, community access TV as well. So first of all, because the camera we're using is shooting the picture, I can't use that camera to show you because obviously I'm using it. So let me go get another couple cameras. I'm going to show you something that you want to consider. Cameras I'm going to show you are your everyday security cameras. You may find these inexpensively uh, on the internet or maybe, you know, from an old store that closed or shut down or upgraded their gear. And they sometimes have the older cameras laying around. I got two hooked up. These cameras are Panasonic cameras. This is the color version, which I will hook up for demonstration a little later on. Okay. Um, these cameras here, I'm just trying to see if, so you can see the picture here. Um, this is a Panasonic CP234 camera. It's a fairly inexpensive camera. It's got a lens kept on top of it here. Um, it's not the greatest in the world. It's not the worst, trust me. I can tell you that for a fact, this is not the worst, okay? Um, this runs on 24 volts AC, the same voltage as your thermostats and your furnace. In fact, if you need to power this, you could power this off of a, a um, thermostat transformer and it will run fine. Or you could buy a wall wart like this one here. And this happens to be a very powerful wall wart. This has got enough power here to easily power four of these cameras easily um in fact this one here says it only requires about 3.7 watts this is a 50 watt transformer um so this one here will power about 10 of these i don't know if you want to put 10 of them in but we're going to be talking about the cameras specifically and then we'll talk about the um this camera here has a 24. This, but all these cameras I mentioned are NTSC. They're not PAL. The PAL versions look the same as this. Um, but they have a different model number. Now, this camera is nice because it has a few features on it, which I do like. Um, even though the picture on it is not that great. Um, it's not, as I said, it's not the worst given its age. Um, it has... It can focus all the way out for C and CS mount lenses. Um, most CS mount lenses only go maybe about this much of a twist um, because they don't have the depth to deal with for um, that. Um, you can probably find one of these for like about $30 second hand. And one of the things that you will notice is that these come with standard BNC connectors. That's not what most people use in the, the cables most people have. Most people have RCA plugs. So you can buy these inexpensive adapters that plug in that allows you to connect your standard RCA cord in here. And one of the misnomers that people have with these kind of cameras is, oh, they need special monitors and things like that. No. That's not this one. This uses standard NTSC um, signal. So you could use this on your TV set or whatever, or plug it into your VCR. This camera here will plug into your uh, VCR and it will work fine. This is the color camera. Now, um, 
you need a lens. Uh, got two different kinds of lenses here. This is a standard mo movie camera lens. This is a six. This is actually, I don't keep saying it's the one inch. It's not. This is a 17 millimeter or point seven inch as it's rated at. It converted it to metric, so it's about 17 millimeter. It's fairly wide angle. Um, it gives a very good picture. It's good for a tight room. But right now, the, the room I'm in now is too tight to even use this. What I like about this lens is it has the option of using filters. The more of the generic standard CCTV um, lenses that I'm going to show you do not have the ability to easily attach a filter to the front. If you want to use filters on these things, you got to be creative um, to make them work because most of them don't have, have filter threads. This is a barrel focal. Now, what is the difference between a barrel focal and a zoom? First of all, um, well, let's talk about how they're similar. Twisting this outer ring here, okay? And it'll make the picture bigger or smaller. Unfortunately, unlike a zoom, you don't preset the focus at one level and then you can zoom in and out. It doesn't work that way. Um, but it does, um, if you don't mind fussing around with pictures, you can get a good picture with it. And um, by mounting these lens on the camera, let's get this back cap off. And just screw in. Like this. We'll be demonstrating this camera. Uh, so when we do that, we're going to need to change the system to use NTSC instead of PAL, but, um, oh well, we'll do that next. Um, so, obviously, you need to get the composite video into the computer. You see that white box down there? And I'm uh, sorry, it keeps going in and out in the viewfinder. This thing there, this is called the Formac FS10. It is a device, it's designed to, the, the black switch box on the top, is to switch audio connections for both the sound card when we're using it to do our audio broadcast and our video. This Formac FS10, it plugs into the camera through TV cables and allows us to take pictures on this. This is back for our demonstration. Getting the picture in is no problem on. Getting the audio in, no problem either. Except that Unlike using a camcorder, there is no um, built-in microphone on this camera. Some of these do have them, uh, but most security cameras, people never thought about sound, so they usually kind of didn't really need it. But if you, you do need sound, uh, so I have uh, my microphone hooked up here to my mixer in the other room, which is then sending the line level audio to the capture device. Um, if you're going to use a VCR or uh, as a recording device, or if you're going to go straight capture it to the computer, uh, there is um, you will need to have a microphone unless you don't want sound. Uh, perhaps, for example, maybe you're setting it up as a security camera. Um, maybe you want to watch your front door or something. This, by the way, is the monochrome camera. I should talk about this real quickly here because people do get confused between these cameras. Um, the audio, or the monochrome, this is a BP314. Uh, I'm testing the picture quality on this. It's kind of, eh, take it or leave it, okay? But I guess for... Watching the back door or your front door, it'll be pretty easy. I like the color camera, the CP234. Um, this is really basically plug and play. Both are running 24 volts AC. Um, this uses about the same amount of current, 3.4 watts. Um, so, this will uh, be able to watch your back door, backyard, and things like that. Um, just like the other camera, I got a BNC after you see something called Genlock. Um, most of the cases you're not going to need the gen lock connection, um, so you, you can just put up, you just ignore it, you don't need it for most things. If you want to use it, you can use it, but it gets really kind of, um, 
difficult to wire these up because then you have to send two coaxial cables and you have to turn the termination on, on all the cameras to off except for the last cable camera in the chain or external 75 ohm terminators for that connection so you're not going to probably be using that so just usually leave this alone the screws we can carry your power and this also has um little some a little tiny screws uh one of them is for vertical phase and the other one is for agc control i tried adjusting both it doesn't really make much of a difference like the CP254, it has provisions for an external um, auto iris on the lens. You can use it with a manual lens. It does CCS mount. Uh, I've had these for a long time. In fact, this monochrome camera I hardly ever used because, unfortunately, some video systems um, on top of on the computers do not like working with monochrome. If you do got one that works with monochrome, you're doggone lucky. Um, this does not have a color burst signal because it's monochrome, it's not color. Why would you need a color burst signal on a camera that's not going to do color? Um, so obviously if you don't have a color burst signal and your capture system depends on it, you're SOL. Okay, sorry. Let's go back to our power adapter. This can be screwed to a three, uh, into a main socket on the oil plate screw so it doesn't come off. It's got a little green LED that will turn green when it's on, so you know it's got power. And um, it can provide, as I said, easily power for 10 of those cameras. On the newer 12-volt um, cameras, please understand that 12 volts AC and 12 volts DC are different things. 24 AC and, 20, and 24 volts DC are different things. So obviously you cannot directly power a modern DC 12 volt camera off of 24 volts AC mains without a proper rectification um, circuit. They make them, they're inexpensive. They just connect into um, the lines. Let's say for hypothetically, and it's not so hypothetical because people do upgrade equipment all the time in retail. You got access to a camera like this laying around. Let's say you didn't even have the power duct. I paid like five bucks for this on eBay. So, and if you get the BNC adapter, and maybe just maybe it already has a lens on it. Can I use it as is? Yes, you can use it as is. But you'll have to learn something uh, how to make it work. By the way, let's talk about the mounting it onto a tripod because that is obviously something you will do. Um, or you can want to understand. The threads are the standard uh, tripod screw. There's no special screws needed for this. The screws, right? I'm using this camera on the standard 35 millimeter tripod for 35 millimeter um, Pentax K1000, and it works fine. It's been using it that way for like almost four years, and I haven't had a problem with it. Um, so the point is is that with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of research you can use any kind of camera you want any kind and it doesn't have to be fancy schmancy do anything including make your breakfast in bed okay you want that sure you can have that but that's not what we're talking about here um all right so what do you need to get started you're going to need a camera okay and you're running the lens and you're going to need a power adapter that matches the supply of the camera so if it's a 24 volt ac you need a 24 volt ac supply if it's a 12 volt dc you need a 12 volt supply which could easily be powered by most wall warts on cameras because most of them have a standard barrel connector um which oh yeah you're going to need a viewfinder because they don't have one so how do you focus a camera if you don't have a viewfinder well obviously as i used to do if the if the camera is close enough to the video monitor um it's not a problem you know you just reach over there and turn the knob and adjust accordingly if you're going to be um getting more and more fancy um just go if it's a dc camera this is even easier because the power supply and the power of camera can power the the lcd monitor as well just go pick up a um an inexpensive LCD, um, three and a half inch, um, 
you know, back at Karen LCD display for car, plug into the 12, 12 volt power supply, please check your player to make sure you don't get it wired wrong, and then loop it through like I did. That way you keep your impedance close to 75 ohms and you don't make a mess of your picture. That's important because um, you don't want to have your impedance go out into left field somewhere. The, um, the thing I found out with the, the, the LCD panel that I'm using is when it looks like the when it looks like the worst and everything it looks like it's greedy, pixelated, and it looks like crap, it's actually when it's the sharpest. It's kind of an opposite way when you think about when you're focusing. Usually you're thinking about focusing, you're going to start with a fuzzy picture, and then you're going to focus it until everything is nice and clear and defined. Well, this thing you have to overfocus it. So the point is, it's only 640 before you display. Now, for NTSC cameras, that's not a big deal, right? Well, yeah, it is because um, maybe on the height, I mean, because I'm going from 720 to 576, and it's trying to squash that into a 640 before you display. It creates all kinds of artifacts. But um, if you're using NTSC, at least. The width is the only thing that's going to be squashed. The, the height isn't going to be. But the problem is that might mean is that some of your uh, circles and things I said look a little bit like uh, ellipses, or like you know, like ovals, um, because of the fact is that it has to squash all that. Some of the better ones will actually will crop it. But the problem is when they crop the picture, is that um, you're losing less viewing area. So. But and the point is, is that you can do it. You can do it any kind of lens you want. It doesn't have. To, it does not have to be a fancy setup. So what I'm going to do uh, is, uh, oh boy, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to mess with the camera that's mounted on the tripod. I'm not even going to go there. This camera's a pain enough to move. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to put this camera back into the other room, and we're going to. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up the. CP234 and the associated main supply and I'm going to put it on top of the monitor is pretty much the way we used to use it in the old days just so you can see the difference and we will try on it the, um, the different lenses. And we would, um, okay, there we go. Uh, actually, it looks good. I mean, it's a little bit pincushiony, but that's okay. That's because I got this the widest thing, setting. I can bring this in really close. Let me let me tighten this shot up a lot. Um, now, remember when I told you when you tighten the shot, it does not keep the focus like a zoom does. So, um, okay, it's as close as it's gonna go. And this one does have an iris on it. I can adjust this if I need to. Okay, there we go. So basically at this point, is this is what I'm looking at here. I have to look at the computer monitor to see if I'm in frame. Uh, must you can guess, give me a real pain in the ass. Uh, because, you know, that just takes a lot of work. Uh, that's why I put an LCD monitor on my other camera so that I didn't have to do that. So, which means I could focus on you and not have to worry about coming in here, running in here, adjusting a few inches frame, make sure I'm still in frame, go back out there, sit in the chair, come back in and adjust again, go out back out there, ten, check, check the focus, go out there, come back in, come back in, go back out there. It's just straightforward and uh, that's how it works. This camera, like I said, is you don't need to worry about out of focus. You don't need to worry about light levels. The camera takes care of that. If you do have an adjustable lens, more than likely you're going to have it wide open anyway. So now I'm going to switch back to this lens. This is the cheap, crappy 6mm, um, which is great because you can change lenses. So if you're not sure what lenses to get, a verifocal is a great choice. Um, but if you're kind of an idea, a six millimeter is a good overall lens because it's, it's going to be a lot simpler to set up than, okay. So here I have, again, I'm going to focus the shot. Oh God, there should be luck. You see, the problem is that the computer is also rendering the video 
indirectly as well. So, okay, so now this is the six millimeter. Um, there we go. Oh, that's a lovely visiting the past. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we have this camera is now I'm saying it's just like it was in my old days, my iPhone. It's sitting on the laser printer. Um, it's 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 uh it's it's working that's the key piece the focus is not critically adjusted it is it's hard to critically focus when you realize that there's always a delay between the computer but the computer computer seeing on the computer screen because it's got to convert composite to analog i mean analog to composite into dv and then the computer has to display it and there's like a couple milliseconds delay between so you basically have to kind of just play it by ear um if you have a standard composite television set um that's a good step plus of course the computer is set up to de-interlace the video so it always makes it look a little bit better um but it's still um i mean it's still it's, it shows a shot it's that's the whole point of the video is to show you the shot and how it works. Um, so it's doable. It works and it is something you can do, um, for you. So if you're in a shoestring for a webcam, yes, you can mount it in a little tiny portable little tripod, like the little stands you sell. And then you can go ahead and set up using, um, your webcam software to, um, do, videos and things like that that's another option you can do so all right guys i hope you enjoyed this little blast in the past now let's get back to the future okay talk to you later bye bye hi this is michelle marie Tlani. i'm the north american snow queen for the north american continent of the united states and canada i do not do mexico but that's under the uh, summer stored of the South uh, and Central American continent. Today I'm showing you some of the videos and things of why I love winter so much. Winter is a special time. It's the only season that has snow and ice and is cold. All the other seasons are warm and mild. Winter is a time of pristine beauty, sterility, and it just looks great. But the things that sometimes people have a hard time with with winter is the fact that winter is not exactly an easy season to live in. People freeze, people die from the cold, but some people thrive in the cold, including me. I am heat intolerant, and so therefore I depend on the winter weather to keep myself alive and healthy. You saw my entry of my house is where it is located it is in Litchfield County in Winston, Connecticut. And it's a small little apartment in this 10 apartment building. And it's not exactly the most modern apartment by any means in the stretch of the imagination as you saw. But I, did, I call this place the Snow Queen's Palace because this is where I live. And my role as a Snow Queen, as I said, serves from December 21st until March 20th of each year. And I live here in this area. And during the summer, I struggle to keep cool. Not easy for anyone, as we will find out. But this short little video is just an example of what I'm able to do today to finally reach out and communicate with you, the watcher. And I'm not very photogenic. I'm older, I'm fatter, and frankly, I wish I was younger in the spring chicken, but you know what? I'm not. I'm an old person. I'm 43 years old at the time of this taping, and I'm very much dedicated to what I do with the weather. In fact, my work for the weather is mostly pretty unglamorous. I don't actually do much to work with the winter weather unless I feel I must. My job is probably just as exciting as being a nuclear reactor technician when the nuclear reactor is working properly. Just occasionally reading the meters and, you know, you know, maybe twi you know, twiddling with the knobs and there and there, but otherwise it's pretty uneventful. But it does have its importances as well. And as you will notice, this 
job is a job that is very special to me. Also, I wanted to uh, re um, explain one more thing, too, while I can. Um, I am legally blind. I, I admit, as I said, I'm not very photo I'm not very photogenic, as I said earlier. But I am dedicated to what I do. And I am sincerely, truly, am also concerned about the well-being of everyone under my watch. I don't feel it's fair to say that all Snow Queens are necessarily beautiful people physically. It's not so much the outer appearance that's important. It's the inner beauty. Now, if you listen, read the original story by Hans Christian Andersen of the Snow Queen, you'll find out that physically she was very beautiful, but she was cold and vain and really kind of nasty. However, unlike the fairy tale version, she never ever really hurt, you know, Gerda. In the, origi in the original home Rec entertainment version, she has actually almost kills Gerda. All because of she wants Kai's piece of the, the glass mirror. I don't have a mirror. I don't have anything like that. What I do have is I have a dedication to what I do. And I'm also well aware and very supportive of the handicapped and, of course, the homeless. And so my work involves carefully preparing and observing all of those things that, you know, make winter what it is. I also take the time to go out there and educate and inform the public of winter safety and winter common sense quite unexpected. Well, that's just the way I am, I suppose. Anyway, I have to get a tripod eventually for this iPhone because my hands are getting tired. And I've been working on this video for now for a little while. It's not very great, but it's, well, it's me. And I'm going to see if we can try to get it out and ready for you to see.